All right, so I'm not a chef in any way, shape, or form. I might say an amateur chef. There are three meals that I make that reheat really well. Uh, they're healthy and they're tasty and they take probably like 30, 40 minutes to cook each. Um, so I'm just gonna go over those three recipes really quickly. Hopefully they're helpful. Hopefully they're nice reheated, which is kind of the reason I'm making this video. So number one is stir fry. Stir fry, I think everyone knows about, it's really easy. So ingredients you need, uh, like some garlic, a knob of ginger, optional but highly recommended is a nice hot red pepper. I use a Fresno pepper, and then any vegetables you want. So you can use red bell peppers, you can use broccoli, uh, and then I like to use a meat, which is chicken. And a good rule of thumb for stir fry that I heard is a third, a third, a third, so a third meat, a third vegetable, and a third rice. And then for my seasoning and marinade of the chicken, I very simply have some honey, sesame oil, and soy sauce. Okay, so first thing you're gonna do is just cut the chicken, put it in here just to marinate it with, with the ginger. So about one inch knob of ginger, one Fresno pepper, and like two to three pieces of garlic. Good tip for garlic, you know, Gordon Ramsay, smash it. Oh God, the awful British accent, please ignore. We're gonna stop that now. And then it comes out of the cloves really easily. Then take your ginger like this. And I like to keep the seeds in just because I like the spice on the pepper. And I also freeze all my really hot peppers because they don't really go bad when you freeze them. And I find that I buy a lot and I don't use them quick enough for them to go well. So I buy like a pound or a half a pound of hot peppers and then I just freeze them and use them over time. So I put these three ingredients together and then just mince it. So then take your mince, put it in the bowl here. It's gonna be a great base for the marinade here. The next thing I'm gonna do is prepare my vegetables. I like to get my vegetables to fit inside this little bowl. Now, usually I like asparagus. I think asparagus is like the best for this, um, but I didn't have asparagus, I had some broccoli. So I'm using broccoli and pepper. You can use asparagus and pepper, you can use spinach, you can use bok choy. You can use really anything you want, which is why stir fry is so, so awesome. And then take your pepper, Gordon Ramsay style, put it face down and cup around this. So, you know, you just don't waste any of it. Don't waste any of it. Okay, we're gonna have to cut out all British accents from this entire video. Just gotta cut them. Good, now we have all our vegetable chopping done so we can make our knife and our cutting board dirty by throwing on this chicken. And usually sometimes the chicken's a little too wet so I just pat it dry that way when I'm actually cutting it, it doesn't move around everywhere. Then I take the tenderloins off, put them to the side. And then I take the breast and I just butterfly it. And butterflying it is just cutting it kind of half this way, see? Butterfly, butterfly. So you should have six butterflies at the end. And I'm just increasing the surface area for the marinade, basically. And then you're just gonna get make some nice little one inch cubes. And we have our chicken and our marinade. We're gonna add two lovely, chunky tablespoons of honey. Cause we kind of need it, especially when these reheat, these stuff reheats with the soy sauce and stuff like that. Otherwise it's kind of just a saltiness. And then one good clog of toasted sesame oil, one and a half. And then like three, tablespoons of soy sauce. Awesome. And that's just loveliness. And then once this is all mixed together, what you're gonna do is you're gonna cover it and put it in the fridge for 30 minutes. Okay, and that's pretty much it. The prep is really, really easy. So we have our vegetables, we have our marinade done, and now I'm just gonna bring you guys over here to the pot over here so we can actually cook this stuff. This is really quick. But before we do that, we're gonna turn the rice on. So you have your rice cooker, and this is my favorite way to cook rice. You have hopefully some nice jasmine rice or white rice or brown rice, whatever you want. If it's white rice though, I make sure to rinse it, otherwise Mr. Jiro would be mad. Get that reference. So now luckily it's pretty straightforward. All we're gonna do, turn this up to a nice high heat, as high as you can really get it. Then we're gonna add our chicken. And then after we add our chicken, we're gonna add our vegetables and just, it'll be done. It's super easy, no fancy cooking. Just bung it in, bung it in, and then put it on top of some rice and it is really, really, really good. Olive oil. Just leave it be for a second. You wanna make sure you get this nice black kind of charring or browning on the bottom. Now you add your vegetables back in. Mix it all together. Look at that, look how colorful and nice that is. <laughs> While we're waiting for our rice to cook, turn this down to a simmer and then just let it all nicely, you know, intermingle for about 10 minutes. Now that is some fantastic rice, look at that. The great thing here is you have enough food for two hefty, and I'm talking hefty, 
leftovers. And the whole point of this video is when you reheat it, I promise you it will taste good. I promise. Next, we're gonna make some curry. So today we are making a fantastic vegetarian curry. I am using chicken stock, use vegetable stock if you don't want to instead, but this is one of my favorite things to make. It's been my most consistent meal for about three years. And simply, it's a curry with eggplant, green pepper, and sweet potato. So what you do first is you cook the base, then you add the veg, and you let it all steam and mix together, and it tastes absolutely fantastic, and it mixes together really well. So the ingredients you need, all you need is one big green pepper, you need an eggplant, you need a nice sweet potato, you need a hot pepper if you want, this is optional, some ginger, some garlic, one onion, cilantro, coconut milk, and then the spices I'm using are curry powder, ground coriander, cumin, garam masala. You also need some chicken stock or veggie stock and some rice, because rice is good. So simply what we're gonna do first is we're gonna prepare the base. So we can get rid of all this stuff here. And the base is just gonna be the pepper, the garlic, the ginger, the onion, and these four spices. And I'm gonna combine all those things in this little bowl. And also, what I forgot, I can't believe I forgot that, some tomato paste, lovely in the bowl there, and of course, some salt. Okay, so I'm gonna cut that up. You wanna mince it really small and put that in a bowl. So we're just making our base still here. You can get your pan over a medium heat with some olive oil at the bottom of the pan. Okay. Let's get our pepper. Let's get our ginger. I like about four cloves of garlic in this. And use the flat side of your knife to just crush this garlic. And then you can simply peel away the garlic, lovely. And then just mince. So you have your lovely minced garlic ginger and pepper. That's all going in the base with the onion, curry powder, half a teaspoon, sorry, of garam masala, half a teaspoon, coriander-ish, and then half a teaspoon of cumin. And your pan should be on a medium high heat with some olive oil right now, just getting to a nice temperature. And then you also wanna add a teaspoon of salt. And then don't forget one of the best things about a tablespoon of tomato paste. Has a really nice sweetness to the onions and things like that. So I just threw that base into the pan over here. I'll show you guys in a second. But because you can cook this now, this base while you're prepping your main thing. Cause you want this base to, sh to go medium low heat for about 10 minutes while you sweat everything off. No browning, no crisping. If you see any of that, just lower the heat or what you can do is add a little bit more oil. Okay, so that's cooking away there. So I'm gonna peel this sweet potato here and then we're gonna make really small dice. I'm gonna just throw that in our big bowl here. And now everything else is much, much easier to dice. The eggplant, very easy, just chop it chop it. Some people say you should seed it, you know, but I never noticed the seeds and it's frankly a pain in the ass. So you just take the skin roughly off the edge, a little skin. Never killed anybody here. Throw that away. And then we're going to do the same thing we did for the sweet potato. Trying to get our dice, again, small to maybe half an inch to make some nice little cubes. And again, we get these nice, really nice little eggplant cubes, which are going to soak up our sauce really nicely. And you can see I'm not doing as fine a chop here with the green peppers because I like a little bit more crunch in my green peppers, so I want it not to cook as much through. Bam, now we have our, our, our middle part here, and this has been cooking for about five, 10 minutes. And our white rice, we're gonna cook right about now. So we've sweat this off really nicely here, cooking for about five to 10 minutes. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw in our main part here Make sure the heat's on about a medium heat. And then we're gonna throw in a nice glug of olive oil here. About a tablespoon, maybe a tablespoon and a half, maybe two tablespoons. I like olive oil. I don't, I don't know how much I just threw in there too. Mix it all up so you get the coating of this fantastic base. And then we're just gonna let everything intermingle nicely, keep it on medium heat, cover it, and let it cook for about 10 minutes. 
And for about this amount of food, this amount of curry, you're gonna make about three hefty meals. So I like to use about three cups, two and a half to three cups of dry rice, dry white rice, uh, and that'll make enough for those three hefty meals. Now you get to phase two, which you add one and a half to two cups of your stock of choice. I like chicken stock, uh, but of course you can make this completely vegetarian if you use veggie stock. Just one cup and then a nice generous other cup here. And all this is doing is softening and seasoning and intensifying some of the flavors in our curry here and our vegetables and our base. And it's just takes it to a little bit of another level. Okay, so stir it up a little bit, raise the heat until you get to that boiling. So until this curry and stock starts to boil, which shouldn't take too long and you can cover it, speed it up a little bit. Now it's been about 10 minutes. What I like to do in about three or four minutes, so five minutes before it's ready, is take the top off of it. That way, you know, we can get let some of the, the liquid go off a little bit and we can condense the flavors down a little bit. If you like a more soupy, kind of liquidy curry, you leave the, cur the cover on for longer. And if you like a more dry curry, a more kind of less soupy curry, you can take the top off. So I'm gonna leave it on for another five minutes. Coconut milk, sneakily enough, has been the thing that I've found to be one of the biggest determinants of whether the curry is good or bad. Of course, you want some good sweet potato, some good eggplant, um, and some good spices. But beyond that, because I think you're adding the, the coconut milk right near the end, you taste a lot of what the actual coconut milk is like, right? So if you have a bad coconut milk, it's, it's not good. So make sure whatever coconut milk you're using, if you use the coconut milk, you just literally just give it a smell and I can usually tell if it's a good coconut milk or a bad coconut milk. I don't know if anyone cares that much about coconut milk, but it affects it. Two minutes to go, I'll add my half a cup coconut milk. And what the coconut milk does, it adds some sweetness to the curry and it takes away a lot of that spiciness because if you add that chili, it's really spicy, but it gets, lets you keep that nice flavor from the chili and it also lets you add a little bit of extra depth to the curry, to the fanciness. And so your curry goes from being this angry orange red to more of like a whitish light orange. And then because you see how kind of liquidy mine is and I think maybe I either added a little bit too much liquid or let it sit a little, a little bit too much under the cover. I'm just gonna give it an extra two, three, four, five minutes until it really gets a little bit more consolidated. Now, because we're near the end, I'm gonna chop up my cilantro here. Again, optional, just like the pepper, but I like a good amount, a bunch of cilantro. Oh, it smells amazing. Turn off the heat now and add our final touch here, which is just a good hunk of cilantro. Off the heat, remember cilantro, because you want to preserve that lovely flavor of the cilantro, the lovely freshness. And then our curry is done. You can give it a taste if you want to see if you want to add a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. But really, it's, it's all set to go. And there you have a fantastically tasty curry. And you'll be able to get two full leftover meals from this. So then for the storage, and those are two ready meals for school, work, whatever. But that is our curry. I'm gonna take a bite now, because I think it's gonna be really good. I know it's gonna be really good. I've made this about a thousand times. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna eat this now. On to the next one. All right, welcome to the final recipe of this three healthy meals thingy majigger. This is a spaghetti with meat sauce, with ground turkey, and hidden vegetables. This recipe is pretty much stolen exactly from Budget Bites, so I'll link down to that recipe down below. But it's amazing, it tastes really good, it reheats really well, and it's, it's relatively healthy. So what do you need? You need some ground turkey, onion, garlic, uh, zucchini, carrots, and whatever pasta your heart desires. And then you also need a tomato sauce. My favorite one is Rao's canned marinara sauce. Uh, and I actually only use like a third to a half of it. Uh, so this was actually from last week when I made the same thing last week. And, if, and you'll need some olive oil and salt and pepper and that's it. So just get your pan to a medium high heat, throw in about two tablespoons of olive oil, this guy, and some salt and pepper. So normally you could just use one onion because these are tiny onions that I have here. I'm just gonna use two of them. And just dice it like we did with our previous onion. Put this onto a nice little plate for later. Next thing we're gonna do is dice our garlic. I love garlic, so I use like six cloves in this, uh, but a more reasonable amount would probably be two or three cloves. Right now I'm just cooking off the turkey, again at a medium heat. And I like to use the dark turkey because it's got a better flavor. 
And right around this point, I'll get some water and bring it to a boil. And make sure to salt your water. And salting your water helps raise the boiling point of the water and obviously seasons your pasta as well. So next we'll do, we'll dice our garlic up. And what I do is I just save my garlic in a nice little corner here. And we get to the sneaky part, which is adding the vegetables. So take your carrots, just chop the tops off. Take your zucchini, chop both ends off. And then I also like to make it just nice and easy and square. So that takes most of the skin off there. Now, what I didn't mention is you also need a cheese grater for this part. Um, if you don't have a cheese grater, you can just dice it as small as you possibly can dice it. And what the zucchini does is it adds a little bit of texture, a little bit of flavor, not much. The carrot, again, adds texture, but it adds a really nice sweetness to the uh, meat sauce. And be careful not to chop your fingers off, like I have multiple times, unless you like a bit of finger in your bolognese, which is not, meat sauce, sorry. Which is, it's not unheard of. And I'll grind my carrot. I'm always sadly reminded of Game of Thrones when I do this. If you can get what reference I'm making, you get a gold star. Now the prep work's done, the next part's gonna be the onion, then the garlic, and then our magical hidden vegetables. So as you can see here, we're starting to get some nice color on the turkey. Really, you just wanna go until you can't see any more pink, and I can't see any more pink. So what I'm gonna do then is add the onion, keep the heat at around a medium, and we're gonna get our onion, which adds some nice flavor here, and do just a little bit more olive oil there. So we cooked our ground turkey for maybe five to 10 minutes um, on a medium heat, and now we're gonna add our onions. Again, keep it in for five to 10 minutes. Add our garlic, let that sit in there for like a minute. Then add our secret carrots and vegetables, let that sit in there for about five minutes. And then we're gonna add our sauce and let that simmer for 10 to 15 minutes. And as soon as we add the sauce, we're gonna add the pasta. That way we know kind of how long to cook the pasta for and how long to simmer it for. And what you wanna do is you wanna avoid getting your onions browned, but you wanna get them a little bit see-through, kinda of like this. Should take about five minutes. And the garlic's just gonna go in for about one minute. Okay, our garlic's been in there for a minute. Throw in our secret hidden vegetables here. And just mix that all together. A little bit more oil. Again, we don't have the oil from the ground beef fat. And we don't have the oil from lamb or anything like that. So we gotta throw in a little bit extra just to make sure things don't burn or stick down too much. Still on a medium heat. Now we let this kind of sit together for about five minutes. Okay, now's a pretty good time to add the sauce. Now, this really depends person by person how saucy, uh, how saucy you want your uh, meat sauce pasta. I really like the meat and the carrots and the onion flavor, so I don't actually use that much of this. This is a 24 ounce can, and I'll use maybe like eight ounces, so like a third of this can. And that's all I'm gonna use. Because again, I really like the flavor that comes from the carrots and the, gr and the ground turkey and all this kind of stuff, so I don't like that much. But if you really like a tomato sauce and you really like a more kind of saucy meat sauce, then you can use double that or even triple that. Some people use an entire can, but I like it more just, more meat than sauce. For the whole time it takes to cook the pasta, so I'll bump this heat up to high. Get my spaghetti out. That's the uh, Italian for spaghetti, by the way, it's spaghetti. But note, note the pronunciation, spaghetti. My editor is Italian, so I hope he doesn't leave me after watching this part. Martino, if you stay with me, here we go. We're gonna put in the spaghetti. Fantastic, lovely, lovely, lovely. And now we just let our pasta cook and we let our stuff simmer. So how do you know if your pasta is done? Well, the very complicated and extremely never think you'd think of it is you taste it. Okay, it's ready now and we're pretty much done. We're just gonna drain the pasta, turn this off. If you have some basil or parsley, might be nice to sprinkle that on top at this point. If you really like cheese, Parmesan cheese. I don't really like cheese and I don't have any basil, so we're going alla norma right now, which is Italian, but I don't think it means what I want it to mean. And the whole reason I made these videos, right, is you have two amazing portions of reheated food here. So you got this one 
And this tastes really, really, sometimes I even think it tastes better reheated. Just like I keep those golden leftovers secure with a nine million key combination lock, I've also realized recently that security on the internet is just as important. I got an email from Google, uh, one of the thousand emails I get from Google saying, you know, listen, you gotta click on this thing to verify your account, blah, 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 blah. And I clicked on it and it went to the Google website and I typed in my password and then it redirected me to the main Google website and I was just confused. What I didn't realize is I was actually tricked. I was fished. And what that means is someone set up an identical website, an identical email to trick me to clicking on this thing so they could take my password and they got my password. I realized then how important it is to be secure on the internet. I don't want anyone to access my information. I don't want anyone to have access to my bank accounts, especially. And I really, really, really don't want anyone to access my secret videos that I have on my computer of me crying when someone tells me they use highlighters to study. Today's sponsor is NordVPN, which is an international company that's number one in internet security, but also does other cool things like allowing you to watch content from anywhere in the world. I now have threat protection always enabled. And that blocks known phishing websites, malicious websites, trackers, and intrusive ads. And NordVPN is offering an amazing deal right now where they'll give you four months free on a two year deal when you sign up using my link, which is just nordvpn.com slash Zach Hiley, and you type in the promo code Zach Hiley. Finally, there is no risk at all because if you don't like it, you can get a full refund in 30 days. Thank you so much to Nord for sponsoring this video. But yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. These honestly are the three easiest, healthiest, and best reheating meals like I've ever made. So I just wanted to share with you guys so uh, you can make them during the week. Okay, I hope that was helpful. I'll see you on the next one.